Welcome, everybody, to a special baseball edition right here on On Texas Football. I'm Blake Monroe, joined by C.J. Vogel. And, C.J., a lot has happened since we did our last baseball video. I mean, there's new players, new announcements. But one thing that I want to start with, man, is Baseball America came out with their way too early top 25. Uh, and Texas ranked number 19. Uh, personally, I, I think that's pretty good there. I'd say anywhere between the 15 and 20 range, even I think you go 22, 23, somewhere in there. But I'm curious to get your thoughts on that before we really dive into that top 25 that they put out. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair, right? When you consider what Texas had returning on its roster before the additions, you probably wouldn't have expected them to be a top 25 team. Obviously, Jalen Flores coming back was massive for the Longhorns to fill uh, that infield role. Obviously, they mentioned it in their, their little write-up here as well. Uh, but you start looking again at what Texas was kind of going through in 2023, right? A 36-24 and 24 record. You didn't see them play – particularly well for long stretches of, of, of time in 2023 or 2024, excuse me. Um, so it, it makes sense for them to now add what they have out of, out of the portal and have that hype again, kind of built up for next season. And I say that because Texas has been very active in the portal, right? We've seen them add three bats, all of which we expect to be big contributors in the lineup this year. They've added 10 arms out of those 10 arms. You have to expect a few of them are going to be good relievers and uh, two or three of them might compete for a, a spot in the weekend rotation or at least uh, that Tuesday night filler guy. So I, I do think Texas has upgraded their arms. I think that lineup is is looking very solid right now. I'm not sure if you have that true star player like a Jared Thomas or, or you know, Max Bailu, obviously, in the conversation. But who else is going to help add to that? I think that they certainly helped uh, one through nine in terms of building that lineup. But in terms of the star player, uh, Blake, I'd like to get your thoughts on what you think this lineup might look like. But at the end of the day, 19th in the country, that's pretty good. In the SEC, <laughs> maybe not, right? Yeah, man, and I, that, that's what I was about to say. I mean, we know that Big 12 baseball is tough. But SEC baseball, CJ, is another animal. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you this. Just the SEC teams off this way too early top 25 rankings from Baseball America. And you can check it out at BaseballAmerica.com, obviously. But number one, number two, Florida. Then number five, Texas A&M. Uh, number seven, Tennessee. Number eight, Arkansas. And then number 11, Georgia. After that, CJ, it goes number 16, Mississippi State, number 17, South Carolina, number 18, Vanderbilt, obviously Texas, number 19, which we already talked about, and then number 23, Kentucky, just three out of the top five SEC schools, but I mean, the list just kept going on and on from there, I mean, the top 20 is just filled with future competition for the Longhorn. Yeah, it absolutely is, right? What is that, 44% of the top 25? This yeah. way too early top 25 look includes uh, SEC programs. So it, it it speaks to the level of competition and also the depth of the conference, right? Yeah. You We talk about it, yeah, Kentucky, Florida, Tennessee, A&M, all of them made strong runs this past year. But even beyond that, Arkansas is expected to make a run. Uh, you know, several other programs. The Mississippi schools, you can't overlook. Vanderbilt's been a perennial power over the last decade as well. So Texas is joining the conference. Oh, don't even forget about Oklahoma. And I know some Texas fans are going to turn that off, right? But they've been on the up lately in baseball a little bit uh, over the last five years or so. So going into the SEC, it's very important that Texas starts out strong. Obviously, we've seen them land a, a number of big-time high school prospects. Casey Cunningham in the 2025 class comes to mind immediately. Adrian Rodriguez, another one out of Flower Mound that Texas has been able to secure. Uh, but, hey, Blake, it's it, it's all about talent accumulation. And so far, I think they've done a great job at doing just that. Definitely. And another thing they've done a great job, CJ, is rounding out this staff, whether that be coaching, support staff, whatever it may be. And uh, recently they added another piece as they hired Greg Mazzello as the director of player development, probably the last hire that we're going to see this summer. But a little bit of background on Mazzello, originally from Alito. Uh, then he went on to Walter State Community College, transferred to TCU, did very well at both of those programs. 
uh, but then was the assistant coach at Johnson University. And then get this, CJ, his dad is the associate head coach at TCU and at one time was also the head baseball coach at Ohio State. So safe to say there's some baseball blood running through that the veins of that family. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And we all know how important that position is uh, to, to be in for the Longhorns. What's been one of the big things that Texas maybe has lacked under the David Pierce era was, you know, consistent development and also finding the right personnel to be on the field or out of the, the, the high school ranks or transfer portal ranks as well. So a uh, very important role, a lot of ties to the North Texas area, right? You talk about uh, the Alito area, the Argyle area, places that just produce baseball talent year in and year out flower mound as well we just mentioned adrian martinez or rodriguez very important area in the dfw uh, metroplex to uh, have a foothold in and we know we've talked about in football time and time again texas has dominated dfw if you can do that in baseball as well you're gonna be in pretty good shape when it comes to attracting top prospects Hey, CJ, another note that I just found on Mazzello as you were talking there, he served two seasons on the collegiate summer league staff of the Anchorage Glacier Pilots in the Alaska Baseball League. I learned something new today. I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, he was an assistant coach for the league championship in 2022, and then he became the youngest manager in league history to win a championship in 2023. So, wow. you know, not, not a ton of collegiate experience there, but Hey, baseball is baseball, and and he's uh, definitely coached at various levels for sure. Absolutely, I, I, you take all the experience you can get, right? You know, when it comes to right. baseball, very much like football, the more ideas, the more experience, the more ball that you've seen, the better coaching staff and opinions that will be tossed up to the staff. I'm all for it. Yeah, definitely. And then, man, another thing that we got to talk about, you know, last time we did a baseball video, what was it, a week, week and a half ago, uh, we were talking about a lot of new players. And at that time, and we posted on, on TexasFootball.com, don't be surprised if Texas adds more, especially at the pitching position. And, man, they've they've done just that, taking four guys, three, uh, since our last video, I mean, Three of those guys being pitchers. And let's start uh, in the SEC, of all places, with Grayson Sonier, the Ole Miss product. What do you think about him? Yeah, I, I actually like what he's got. You know, this is a guy that had 11 appearances, 10 starts. He had a 5-6 ERA, but the the, the pieces, the tools, uh, the velocity are there, right? It was interesting a year ago. He, he didn't exceed five innings pitched in any of his uh, – outings Blake so I think what you saw with him was a, a guy that would open games go through the lineup a, a time and a half or two times you know and then move on I think a little bit of that uh, was just being new to the starting rotation right you know it takes some time to get used to that he'll be a guy that I think figures into that Tuesday night maybe Sunday afternoon uh, slot in the Texas rotation he'll fight for a spot there uh, but at the end of the day I mean uh, 35 strikeouts and 44 and two-thirds innings uh, 16 walks. So you see a pretty good strikeout to walk ratio. You'd like to see that strikeout number exceed the innings pitched number. That's one of the big marks that I look for in terms of uh, evaluating the production of pitchers at the college level. But at the same time, you'll take a, uh, a, a left-handed or sorry, a right-handed pitcher that with starting experience any time of the week. And then they also added another SEC product in uh, Connor McCreary out of South Carolina and you know they 19 appearances on the mound for the Gamecocks this past season held his opponent to a 190 batting average uh but you know li a limited action I mean he's only only was only a sophomore last year curious to get your thoughts on McCreary yeah another guy straight reliever in my eyes right 19 appearances no starts uh, uh but Blake one thing that I think has got to clean up is 22 and two-thirds innings, he had 16 walks. So I think yeah. he's got good stuff. You know, that that's something that I think Texas fans are looking at right now, saying, oh, boy, not another guy that can't find the strike zone, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that 190 batting average, very impressive. That's the type of mark that once you find the, the strike zone consistently, that ERA drops, that whip drops, and all of a sudden you're looking like a much better prospect on the mound. I think right now for him it's just about finding that consistency around the zone because uh, 25 strikeouts in 22 and two-thirds, it's pretty solid. You'll take that. Yeah, and I, I was just looking at some of the uh, SEC teams that he played. He uh, did go against LSU back in May. 
didn't allow an earned run, pitched 2.2 innings of relief in the SEC tournament game. And then also against Missouri, he struck out four and 2.2 innings. That must be his thing, 2.2. Uh, only allowed one hit there. And then the other kind of bigger opponent that he played was North Carolina, who did very well this past season. He picked up a save and a win over them, striking out five and 2.1 innings of work. So there's definitely some flashes there and you can't doubt the arm farm yeah absolutely i think that's the big thing right you got to tip your cap to the arm farm and put the trust in him much like we have with the texas football staff right uh, i'll keep referencing that group because I, i'm trying to draw the parallels here uh, but the arm farm and what he's done previously to get a m into the top five of vra the past two seasons you certainly have to put your trust in him that he'll develop these guys uh very much yeah. And then the other pitcher, CJ, uh, not an SEC guy, but still an important arm nonetheless, Jared Spencer, the left-handed pitcher out of Indiana State. Yeah, Texas Athletics going back to Indiana State to poach some kids out of the portal. <laughs> Obviously, te Texas basketball and Rodney Terry did a, did that earlier this, uh, this offseason with a pair of transfers there. Jared Spencer is really interesting, right? Left-handed pitcher. He had time both on the mound and out of the bullpen. 53 innings pitch, 72 strikeouts, Blake. That's the big number I'm looking at right there. That's really impressive. That's a, yeah. a strikeout and a third per innings pitch. That's an elite mark in my eyes at the college level coming from the left side as well. It certainly helps that he has experience from the left uh, on the mound out of the bullpen and out or on on the hill to begin games. It's very important to me uh, when you start looking at how this ro uh, this rotation might look like. Um, but a guy with left-handed uh, pitching experience, a lot of strike strikeout ability as well. I'm a big fan of his. I think he figures into the weekend rotation when it's all said and done next year. Yeah, man, and he boasts a 97-mile-an-hour fastball, also has a pretty phenomenal slider. And one thing to note on Spencer, CJ, he was actually selected in the 14th round yeah. of the uh, 2024 MLB draft by the Phillies, but will be taking his talents to Austin. And then the other one uh, that popped here recently and kind of unexpected, I mean, it wasn't something you and I were really looking for up until, what, about an hour before it, hour or two before it happened, was Jacques Stewart, the Juco first baseman. But, man, I mean, that that's an important get for the Long Longhorns. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, 100%, right? You know, the question was, you know, with Jared Thomas departing for the MLB, who's going to fill the, thir the first base role? And I, I think that they – Found a, a guy that they liked in Max Bergevin. He obviously stuck with his Texas A&M commitment after they hired uh, Michael Early. Uh, this is a guy that I'm actually quite a big fan of, Blake. Yeah, I know he played junior college ball a year ago at Northwest Florida State. However, his numbers, you know, kind of mirror that of a video game, my player, right? You know, <laughs> hit, hit 346 at the plate, but his slugging was a tick under 1,300. And that's very impressive right? Uh, seven doubles, 15 home runs. Real thing to me here, Blake, is anytime you have more walks than strikeouts, that tells me you have great plate discipline. It tells mm -hmm. me that you don't chase. And it tells me that you understand what you can do at the plate, whether it be fighting off to extend at bats, finding your own pitch and sitting on it, obviously with 15 home runs, but also 62 walks out of 210 plate appearances, <laughs> that's remarkable. That's really impressive. He led all of Juco ball with a 548 on base percentage. That's elite. He gets on base, and that's what you need in your lineup. Man, what I like about him too, CJ, is he's one of those clutch guys, and that that is something that you need in baseball. Uh, when they had the Florida Junior College Regional Championships, he was three of four, of four at the plate, uh, drove in six runs in the title game against Chipola College, and then he also won the MVP award uh, in all of that too. So, man, you, you can't have enough of those clutch players. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, out are you? You take all the MVPs you can get for a lineup. Absolutely. <laughs> Without a doubt. Well, with that said, let's take a look at uh, this lineup here going forward. I know we're going to obviously be doing some projecting, and obviously a whole lot can change over, what, the next seven, eight months. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. And I, we did this on the last video as well, uh, but with the addition of Jacques Stewart, some things may have changed in, in our eyes. So, and I know we've talked about this off the air, uh, but I'm in agreement with you on on this. We, you know, we've kind of gone in depth on this before, but let's uh, let's hear, let's get a rundown of what you're thinking. 
Yeah, this will this will be an interesting one, right? You know, I think you filled your f- first base void. What's going to happen at third base? Is that going to be, uh, you know, Casey Boraba moving over? Is that going to be Adrian Mark, uh, Rodriguez? I, I think there's a big question mark there. Uh, however, most of that other lineup I think is going to be looking good, right? Your DH or catcher is going to be a split between Kimball Schlusler and uh, Rylan Galvan, right? Those are going to be your two guys. You have uh, uh, Jock Stewart at first base. Obviously, Ethan Mendoza is going to be your plug-and-play second baseman from Arizona State. A uh, really, really nice piece added out of the portal there for the Longhorns. Uh, obviously, Jalen Flores is huge, Blake. We can talk about that here in a minute. Uh, but to have him at shortstop, arguably one of the country's best at the position, very important. Third base, I mentioned it. It's either going to be Casey Borba or it'll be Adrian Rodriguez. I think the two are going to have a battle out. I lean more towards Borba because of his experience at the collegiate level, obviously. Uh, and then I think your outfield is pretty set, right? That's a really – Really impressive looking outfield. Obviously, uh, Max Baylou comes back. Your right field, your reigning Big 12 player of the year, comes back for the right field spot. Will Gasparino is back in, in Austin. Blake, you mentioned that uh, the last time we did a baseball update. He's working all summer, all offseason here in the Metro yeah. or in the Austin area, right? He's your center fielder for 2025. And then Easton Winfield out, out of Louisiana Monroe, uh, a guy that can do it both on the base paths. And with his bat, that's a guy that had a a 9-10 OPS and 18 stolen bases a year ago. Impressive piece. He'll be in left field in my eyes. Outfield looks great. Infield, for most of it, looks very good as well. Still one piece remaining. And I think you got two catchers that can play some pretty solid ball as well. Yeah, without a doubt. I'm with you. I'm excited on that outfield, uh, you know, with with the addition of of Winfield and obviously getting a little more experience under the belt for some of those other guys. It's going to be really interesting to see how well they perform, you know, both offensively and defensively. I mean, they've added some big bats. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And we've talked about it. Texas still on turf for 2025. So that defense, (laughs) as you mentioned, uh, should remain very high for the Longhorns. I know that was a big piece of uh, the puzzle, good or bad, you know, especially when you started looking toward that college station regional a little bit. But uh, at the same time, that's a big part of the game in Texas. Uh, to my eyes and estimations, the guys they out of the portal, good guys in the field as well with the glove. And let me ask you this before we get out of here, CJ, if there's one thing that you could point to as being the biggest piece of the puzzle for next season, and you can't use the, obviously the uh, hiring of Schloss, but what are, what are you most excited about? What makes you feel great for next year? Yeah, I, I look at the bullpen and I say this this bullpen has to be better than what we saw a year ago, right? I mentioned Aiden Moffitt earlier, a guy out of LSU, 16 appearances. The ERA wasn't great, but he can pump high 90s. Uh, Cade Bing, another one who might have a, a, a future in the bullpen or at, in the rotation. Uh, and then Ruger Riojas out of UTSA, right? 27 appearances, 3.2 ERA, uh, 69 innings pitched. Right. He, they used him for multiple innings at a time, 75 strikeouts. So uh, I, I really think that there are a number of pieces that they added out of the portal uh, that will help that bullpen tremendously. That was a big weakness. Anytime you saw the, the arms out in right field get warm, you start thinking, oh, boy, is this going to be one of those games in which uh, we're going to have to be calling to the pin over and over and over? Or can one of these guys come in and shut down the rally? Can they go you know, two or three innings? Can they get us to the finish line? I thought that was a weakness in 2024. I don't know yet if it's going to be a weakness in 25. However, I do know the picture is looking much brighter with the pieces that they've added so far. So I like your pick. For me, I think I'm going to go with shoring up the the middle infield, man. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, getting Flores back and then adding Mendoza out of Arizona State, they've they've really done a number there. And I I don't think people realize how much of a question mark there was at shortstop and second base before, you know, his before Flores announced that he was coming back and obviously Mendoza committing to Texas. So I, those two things right there were tremendous for the Hornets. All the pitching, the bullpen, as you said, getting some of these guys in, seeing what the arm farm uh, can do with them. I think those are two things that Longhorn fans can, you know, feel really good about heading into that gauntlet of an FCC schedule that they'll be playing next year. Yeah, I like that pick, right? We saw D. Kennedy depart for Kansas State. Obviously, it looked like he was going to be the guy penciled in for second base in 2025. He had different plans. He departs after the Pierce departure as well. Ethan Mendoza is a good baseball player, and you're going to have him for multiple years. That's the most important thing, him and uh, 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 the kid out of ULM, right, Easton Winfield. So. 
certainly helps bode uh, for the future in terms of competing long term with some of these SEC programs. I have that continuity. Of course, you'll also have Will Gasparino. So looking way too far ahead, you have a nice little core right there uh, with, with some solid infield and outfield pieces for the Longhorns. Well, no doubt about it, CJ. One thing that is easily, you know, you're easily able to see right now is that Texas fans are excited about this baseball team for good reason. New players, new staff. It's going to be a lot of fun next year. Now we wait. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got one last note before we get out. Uh, we talked about Case and Cunningham, the prospect out of San Antonio, the infielder that Texas committed, uh, got committed in, the, in their uh, their class next year. Uh, Blake, number one player in the country or in yeah. the state, excuse me, right? Very yeah. talented uh, baseball player. Uh, MLB.com put out a way too early first round mock draft for uh, <laughs> for the 2025 season. He was going number 26 in the first round. So. We'll see, you know, just how solid of a senior season he has. Uh, of course, Texas would love to have him on campus, but you never know with some of these baseball cats. Uh, that's a kid that we're keeping a close eye on because he, that was a big commitment to land for Jim Schlossnagel and the Texas staff once they got to Texas. That's right. And one other thing I, I got a note to add as well that I just thought of Texas having some baseball camps over the next few weeks. Uh, so we could see some possible new commitments coming soon, or at least some new guys that they'll be keeping tabs on going forward. So that all will be starting here very soon. All right, CJ, well, that's going to do it uh, for this baseball edition of On Texas Football. And we'll be back with some more baseball news breaks, which here lately is any time now. <laughs>